Hello, welcome to my Azure Quick Hits video series. In this video, we're going to configure the identity services for AVS to use a domain controller with an Azure Certificate Services certificate. For this demo, we have a very simple infrastructure, a VLAN hub with an express route connection to AVS and two VNet peerings, one to the jump box and one to the domain controller. The first thing we need to do is to make sure there's a reverse DNS entry available. So we'll open up DNS. Let me close down the service manager there. Close this a little bit. AVS. Go to reverse lookup zones. And new zone. Next. Primary zone. To all DNS servers running, that's fine. And the network ID here. So we'll just enter in 10.2.80. And click on next. And click on finish. Now click on the forward lookup zone. AzureHorizons.ca, that's our domain name. Double click on the domain controller record and click on update the associated PTR record and click apply. Okay. If you want to check, you can look in the reverse lookup zone and you'll see here that we now have one for the domain controller. There we go. So now let's switch over to our portal window and we're going to choose virtual networks. And the virtual network we're using is called Use for Testing. And then click down on DNS servers and we're gonna change it to a custom server and we're gonna enter the IP address of, um, of that domain controller, 10.2.80.196. Click on save. And then what we're gonna to do to check it's worked properly is to make sure we can resolve that name from a command prompt. So we will go here to the jump box. We're doing IP config slash renew to update the DNS entry. And then we're gonna do an NS lookup for avs-dc01.azure.ca. And you can see that we now are using or that DNS server. So now let's return back to the domain controller, start up the Active Directory users and computers. We'll just close the DNS one behind us here. And what we're gonna do is create a new organizational unit and a new group. So let's do uh, new, organizational unit. And this one, we're going to call AVS admins. Click OK. And then inside this new OU, we're going to create a group. And the group is going to be called AVS LDAP S users. Now we're going to create a new user. I'm going to call this guy Fred. And last name can be AVS admin. All right, and so his user logon name is just gonna be Fred. Click next. His password is gonna be top secret. You guys can work that one out. Okay. And let's create another user. We'll call this one Susan. And she'll be part of the same group, yes, or same family. And her login name can be Susan. Next, password. Next, finish. Next, we're going to set up the certificate services. If you already have certificate services, just make sure you've got the right roles created. So let's open up Server Manager, go to Manage, go to Add Roles and Features, click Next, click Next, click Next, choose Active Directory Certificate Services, Add Feature, click Next. Click next, click next, click next. Previous, make sure we've got the certification authority selected, right? That's the critical role you need for this, um, uh, for this to work. Click next and click install. And then click close. This does not require a reboot. Now we're gonna finish the post deployment configuration. So credentials, that's fine. Azure Horizons FT admin, that's my username. Click next. Select role to configure, and that's going to be certificate authority. This takes up to a minute or so to complete. Then click next. We're going to choose the enterprise CA. Again, this takes a few seconds to complete. Then click next. Create a new private key. Yes. And for leave this as the default, 248 and SHA-256. Click on next. And here we'll get the information about the key itself. Click next. Select the validity of the key, five years. That's based on whatever your corporate policy is. I'll leave that as the default for now. Uh, again, corporate policy, I'm gonna leave the defaults. All right, and now we're gonna click on configure. 
And once more, this will take about 30 seconds to complete. Once that's done, you can click on close. Now that we have certificate services set up, let's open up the cert and we'll just minimize server manager there. And now what we're going to do is to generate a certificate that allows or enables LDAPS connections. And then on certificate templates, we're going to right click and select manage. And then from here, we're going to actually go down and choose Kerberos authentication and right click on this guy and say duplicate template. And so in this section, we're going to fill out the following under the template name. So first let's go to general and the template name. We're just going to call this the AVS uh, LDAP S authentication. Okay, we'll make it valid for a period of five years. And again, this will be based on your on your corporate policy. Okay, we're going to click on publish it in Active Directory, then flick over to the subject name tab, choose DNS name and service principal name. And then under request handling, we're going to click on allow private key to be exported. All right, click on apply and then click on OK. Now you notice that we see an AVS LDAPS authentication uh, template here. All right, close the certificate templates console and on the cert serve console, we're now going to do new, right click and say new and create template to issue. And here we're going to choose the AVS LDAPS authentication, click OK. And now you're going to see it's up here in our certificate templates list. So now we're going to go to the local computer certificates uh, snap in. So start on the run button, type in certificates. And you're going to see manage computer certificates. Uh, we can just minimize this for now. And we're going to open up personal and certificates. And then right click on certificates, go to all tasks and say request new certificate. Click on next and then click next again to uh, accept the default Active Directory enrollment policy. Now we're going to select the uh, previously created certificate and click on enroll. If you want, you can click on the details button and then click finish. Now the last step is to export this certificate. So we're going to go down to export, click on next. Do not export the private key. We don't need the private key at this point. Click next. Choose base64 encoded x509CER, click next, and then create a file name. So we're going to call this the uh, LDAP S auth for AVS. Click next, the folder it's being stored in, and then click finish. At this point, we're going to go back to the portal and we're going to create a storage account where we're going to upload that uh, certificate. Click on storage accounts or select storage accounts. Click on create. We're going to choose the resource group where we've got all our AVS uh, environment and for the storage account name we're just going to call it AVS DC01. The region is going to be West US2 and I'm going to change this to locally redundant storage. Your storage policies may be different. You can leave it on standard performance. Next click on advanced. That's fine. We can leave the defaults. Click on networking. For the moment we're going to leave this on enable public access from all networks. Uh, data protection, leave the standards, encryption, Microsoft managed keys is fine review and create. So this is going to create the storage account for us and then click on create. Once the storage account is built, click on the go to resource and then click down to the containers and we're going to add a container. Use small characters, public access, private node, that's fine. Click on create. Then we're going to open the container up and we're going to upload the cert file. So for me, that's in my downloads folder and there it is, LDAP cert. Open, upload, Fantastic, that's completed. Close this. Now go to the ellipses at the end, generate a SAS token. So the first thing we're gonna notice is that the start and expiry is on the same day and about eight hours apart, or at least eight hours difference. Uh, we can change that down to say two hours, 10 a.m., at which point it's gonna expire, and then generate a SAS token. This is important, we wanna actually copy the SAS URL. Okay, and then just open up Notepad and paste that URL into Notepad. All right, we're finished with this part. So click over to your private cloud, scroll down and find the run command. 
inside the Microsoft AVS Management section, click on the new LDAP S identity source. Now you're gonna see it auto populates for me because I've done this a couple of times in prepping for this video, but you're gonna put in the group name. This is the group of the LDAP users. This is the LDAP users group that we defined in Active Directory. The SAS URL, that's the one we just copied from over here, right? Where we actually put it into our clipboard, but we're copying it from there. And control V, paste it in. The username. Be careful if you have credentials stored, you'll actually notice it overwrites the SSL cert. So you just got to the SSL cert URL, so just make sure that's correct. And then type in your password. Base DN groups. I actually include the DN of the group where it is, but you don't have to. You can put just the base DN as well. Base DN users, same idea. Depends where you put them. Secondary URL is if you had two LDAP servers. For us, it's just going to be one because we just have a single LDAP server. The domain alias is the NetBIOS name for the domain, and the domain name, of course, AzureHorizons.ca. And then the name, this is just a tag. All right, so when we've got all that set, we can then click on the run command. This takes anywhere from two to five minutes to complete. If you close that page and then click on the run execution status, you'll see the, uh, the actual execution of the run command, and you can open it here and then follow what's going on. If you go to the information, you'll see it's starting to build. This is looking good. Uh, warning, no warnings, no errors output and then oh and we actually have success here uh, so click on the details it'll show you the information you typed in all right so now we've got this done let's close this and we will spin up our virtual machine in this case I'm actually using the domain controller and from the domain controller I am now going to go and log in using an identity from the Azure Horizons domain so launch vSphere client and we should be able to log in using susan at azurehorizons.ca and then the password. Excellent, it's working fine. All right, that's it. So for the next minute or so, I'm just gonna talk about some things that went wrong. And to do that, I think the best way to do it is to actually look at some of the examples. So for instance, uh, at one point, when we're running a new identity source, and you can see I've done it a few times here, we got some error messages that look like this. Already have an external identity source of the same name. So that means that the remove identity source didn't finish. So one piece of advice I'd give is always wait a few minutes, five, 10 minutes after you finish doing an action on the run commands before you rerun or run another command. Let's take a couple other ones. We're gonna do the failed deployment of the new identity source. This is very common. This one here comes unable to add group to cloud admins, so it's already added. So in this case, I ran the identity source successfully, and then I uh, removed it. For whatever reason, the users group wasn't removed from cloud admins, so I used the remove group from cloud admins command to actually force it. And then I have a couple other ones that are interesting. New identity source failed to probe provider con connectivity. I see this error message when I use the same SAS token twice. So if I already had a token, I used it successfully or unsuccessfully, and then I reuse it, I get this message. And then the interesting ones, AVS admin users not found in the domain. Okay, so in that case, I don't have a group by that name in the domain. Um, I wanted to show you one. Failed to download certificate, invalid URI. Okay, so that happens when you do the um, pasting of the username and password, and it automatically and it shouldn't, but it does, updates the URI with the password from the username. So just be aware of that. Okay, I think that's it. Thanks very much, hope you found it useful. Um, please feel free to ask any question in the comments section. I will tell you I've also experimented with third-party certs and I'm going to create a video that shows how to create the cert uh, using DigiCert and how to get authentication working with this using DigiCert. So stay tuned for that.